This is Drom Shekasuto. Thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you guys. For you beautiful ones that heard my class yesterday night, and for those ones who heard all the rest of my last um, classes, talking about the redemption and talking about um, how this world is a creation. This is a very deep, very, very deep concept and very important for all of us to understand. And I must tell you that your merit from heaven to hear about those things, like there is no one else that is talking about those things, with no doubt. Like this is, um, I, I, I don't know how to, to define it, but it's very close to prophecy because it's a real um, way that the Creator chose um, me um, to reveal a certain knowledge and information to me, for me to share it with you guys. And it's, 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 it's a very, very deep and powerful thing that we're experiencing by exploring those ideas, just by thinking about them and understanding it. Because that is exactly how we're building the tools, the vessels for the real redemption to take place by understanding the nature of it, by being able to hope for it. Because for thousands of years, people hoped for the redemption without even understanding. Like that guy hopes for Mashiach to come because he'd been told that he needs to wait for Mashiach. Another one is waiting for salvation to come because he wants to get rid of all of his troubles. Another one wait for Mashiach because he wants to cover his mortgage already. And everyone with his problems just desires something that is not available for him right now. And he calls it a redemption, but without real understanding, detailed and described um, plan of his almighty plan and, 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 and godly will for us to be redeemed. Now the Creator is kind enough to share his wisdom to those ones who will deliver the knowledge as clean as it's been given to them. And I'm putting all my effort to deliver it to you and to open your eyes and mind for you to enjoy this wisdom and to understand the godly plan. And I wanted to share another thought about it that I think that can put a lot of light for you in your journey. The Creator before time of creation was, like we say in the verse, en od mil vado, there is no one except of Him, except of Him. It's only Him. And He was one in perfection and everything was un united and bond to Him. Now when He decided to create the world, so he had to create that empty space and then to create a world of separations, a world of dividings, a world full with shapes and sizes and measures and colors and, and all kinds of, of separations for us to become individuals. But actually, because we know and we understand that there was no one else except of him early before of time in the ancient ancient time before of time before time started to be divided into years into months into weeks hours minutes and on before of that when eternity controlled everything infinity controlled everything there was no one except of the creator himself and when he decided to create the worlds he had to create them it's like an invention. He had to made up something. He had to made it out of, out of the material that he had. And the material that he had was his individuality. There was only him ahead of time, before of time. And there was nothing else until then. And when he decided to create the world, he basically removed himself to the sides and created that, so to speak, empty space 
And into that empty space that now started to hold physicality, he sent himself. Again, because there is nothing else except of him. He minimized his light in a certain way, in a, in, in a certain form, that created, so to speak, an area that is empty, so-called, from his godliness. And then he resent his light, his true self, into behind the curtains. And that's life itself. When you eat an apple, the apple holds inside of it a spark of godliness, a spirit that revives you when you eat it. You yourself as an individual, as a creation, a human being or whatever you are, every kind of the creation, every kind of creation are vehicles, cells that are holding spirit that is 100% godly inside of them. To understand it deeper, in a deeper way, the Creator sent Himself into a world of forgetfulness. And He Himself, as an individual, so to speak, as us, as forms of life, as the same light, simple light that He was before, just now divided into shapes, into bodies, by penetrating and getting into those vehicles, forgot his inner connection to himself. That's what he did to himself, because there was no one else except of him before of time. And when he wanted to create the world, he created a screen. He created a wall. He created a world of separations. And then he resent his light into that matrix, into that imaginary world, world of illusion that appears to hold the spirit inside of it, when really, still, in reality, there is nothing else except of the Creator. When a person finds his true identity, he becomes one with God again. And when you are one with God, there is no you and him any longer, because you became one. You and your wife, you and your children, there are no dividings between you when you realize that you are one unit. You become one. When she feels pain, you feel the pain. When she thinks about something, suddenly that idea wakes up in your mind and you go and you do that. And if you don't realize that, and if you're not sensitive enough to realize and to sense it and to feel it, it means that you need to work on your bonding. You need to work on those channels to be clean and to transform the wisdom and the knowledge and the sensitive information that, that you, we will start sensing and understanding and feeling what really goes on in those spiritual channels. When you work on yourself and you clean yourself and you connect yourself to the Creator, what that you find inside of yourself is Him, Himself. And therefore, all the worlds of separations are coming down to limit us, and they are all in a shape of judgment. The Creator created the world after looking in the Torah, at the Torah. And the Torah is a book of rules, is the book of obligations, things that you should do, things you should protect yourself from doing and not do those things. And it's a book of rules. The Creator looked at that book, at the Bible itself, and created the world in a similar way to how it's written in the Bible. The wisdom that is built as a structure of the Bible is the godly plan of the creation. So everything in creation came down in the form of the Torah. So when people are violating the Torah, they're being punished if it's in this lifetime or if it's in a different lifetime. If people are keeping the rules of the Torah, so they are being rewarded and they're enjoying the, the, the prosperity and the bounty of those ones who had the merit to attach themselves, but it's still inside the matrix. Even though that it's a Torah, and even though that it's holy and godly and pure, 
it's still um, a, 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 it's still a structure. It's still some creation that the creator created. But the real creator is above time. The real one that we desire, infinity itself, the endless source of good, is beyond the world and beyond the rules of Torah. And when a person uses the tools of Torah by following Hashem and listen to the voice of heaven and connecting himself, the Torah will provide for him only the basic levels and, and tools to come closer to Hashem. The real person that will be connected to the Creator will rise to dimensions that are higher and higher than any structure. You will find an inner voice inside of you, a voice that is not committed to anything except of to his own goodness. And by that you become a true sparrow, a true free person. When you find your true self, you become a free person. You feel that you're allowed to think and you understand that you should express your thoughts. And you go and you grow with the inner wisdom that your heart is telling you. And you follow with your belief in yourself, the inner understanding, the deepest understanding that is coming from a place that is before and beyond all judgments and all rules and all obligations of the rules of the Torah. You are connecting yourself to the white fire of that blank page, the holy light, heavenly light of souls that are not trapped in body. The codes of keeping Torah and mitzvot being given to human beings means to souls that are trapped in bodies, for the bodies to keep the Torah. But the souls are free from the obligation. Now, it doesn't mean that we as souls now should break the vows and break the commandments, God forbid. For sure that we must, as long as we are being carried by our bodies, to keep the rules of the Torah and to be observant as much as we can. But in moments of illumination, in moments of love, it's like that in a relationship. You, as a couple, you have your obligation. One is taking care of the kids right now, and one makes dinner, one do this, one do that. Everyone has his jobs. But in a moment of love, in a moment of illumination, of inspiration, the connection is beyond words, is beyond commitment, is beyond obligations and partnership. It's something spiritual that only in your mind is shining, only in your heart is illuminating. Also the bonding and the connection with the Creator is the same, is similar to that. We're following His rules and His codes and His obligations, and we're being observant as much as we can, and we're doing whatever we need to do by the book, while knowing that our souls are godly in the end of the day. He lives inside of us, not as two separated individuals, the Creator and I. No. Inside of me, the Creator lives. When I am alive, it's the life of the Creator that lives inside of me. Only my forgetfulness, only because that I'm on a mission, so I don't remember that I am who I am like the Creator's name. Who are you? Who am I guiding you all the time to be the one you are? And when Moses asked Hashem, how I'm going to redeem them from Egypt, how I'm going to save them from Egypt, what I'm going to tell them for them to believe me, Hashem told them, tell them that, the, that I am, that I am sent you, sent me to you. Find your true selves, and then you'll find the one that is Him inside of you. You are the one you are, means that you are the blessing one. 
Today we are trapped in our own individual bodies, so we're separated from that noble source of our true being. But our true being is a free spirit with no limitations, with no constrictions, with no boundaries, with no body, without no limit. Free spirits, good and holy, that are seeking unity and grace and kindness with no end. And the redemption will reveal that godliness that is treasured inside of us. And we all, as one, are going to see the complete reflection of heaven. And by that, follow his light to the holy city of Jerusalem and accept his real true face in the redemption day. Thank you so much. The world is not existing. Because Olam Milchon Elev, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. Thank you.